What's up bakers, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a high hydration sourdough. Something like this right here. Working with high hydration doughs is extremely challenging, but super rewarding. You're gonna get the best expression of crust and crumb. You're gonna have amazing flavor and you're gonna have amazing shelf life. If you're selling the breads as bonus points, you're gonna make more money because you can put more water into the dough. So let's get started and make this bread. For our high hydration sourdough, we're gonna do an overnight leven build. This is gonna rise slowly for about 10 hours so that we can mix our first dough right away in the morning. Now, depending on your schedule, you might wanna change the inoculation. So we're doing about one, 10, 10, or 10 grams, 100, 100. Whereas if you wanted this to rise in about four hours, you could do equal parts. And then that way in four hours, you're ready to mix your dough. So you just need to figure out what's best for your schedule. I use an Excel to calculate all of my recipes and I can sort of just plug in the numbers and I'll leave a link to that below so that you can download that as well if you want. All right, let's get our Levan ready. So as I mentioned, I always use these Excel spreadsheets. It just makes my life easier. Um, the biggest error for me in baking is human error. And, and if I'm sort of talking to someone while I'm scaling or if I'm writing it down, I've done this before where I've like times five a recipe and then I forget to times five the salt or the water and then in the mixing you realize. So by doing this, it just saves me so many mistakes. So we have here for 8% Levin, 100% water, 90% bread flour and 10% rye. This is gonna take about 12 hours to rise. So we're gonna start with eight grams of starter. I know it's not very much, but it's going to make a nice fermentation. We're going to do 459 grams of water. Now, because this is an overnight levain, I'm just using room temperature water from this Brita. 46 grams of fresh milled rye. and 413 grams of bread flour. Now, if you're, like I said, if you're a couple grams over on the water, that's totally fine because it actually makes it easier to mix when you have a little bit more water. It's going to change the fermentation a little bit, uh, but I find that the development is really nice. All right, clean as you go and mix this up. And then we're gonna place a lid on this and we're gonna let this sit for 10 to 12 hours. Now, personally, I like to make a quick label so that I can remember, or I will just write it right on this piece of paper what time I did the build at. So you can do that either way. Put this here and I will write 10 p.m. Now I'm gonna set this aside and I'll see you in about 10 hours. I'll get cleaned up here and I'll see you in the morning. It's been about 10 hours since we mixed our Levin and it's time to mix our first dough. We're gonna start with a very quick auto lease, but you can see here, our starter has risen and it's ready to go. It's actually just starting to like, kind of fall in the middle and recede and that's a sign that we need to get this in the mixer right away. So I've already measured out my ingredients I've got 20% rye and 80% bread flour. We've got about 84% of the final weight in water. So our total hydration today with the starter is going to be about 85, 86. I have to double check my spreadsheet to confirm that, but it should be somewhere in there. And then I've got a pitcher of water with a scraper to help me mix the dough. I've also got an empty container and I'm going to take out about 10% of the water. So when you're working with this kind of dough, it's always better to add the water in stages. So I'm just gonna take out about 250 grams of water. Now that's a lot, but I'm also making a large batch of dough here. So if you're making, I'm gonna go a little bit more. So if you're making a smaller batch, you can just take out roughly 10%, but I'm just eyeing it. Now I've found when I'm working with rye flour, I don't really want a long auto lease. So we'll do about 20 to 30 minutes. We're gonna start with the water in the mixer. Next, we're gonna add our flour. Now I measured the flour together, so the rise in the bottom, it's just easier for me. I like to place the salt 
on top and the extra water on top just so I don't forget it. We're gonna close the mixer, put it on first speed or lowest speed and we'll start to mix. I've got the dough scraper in water and I'll just scrape down the sides. All we're trying to do here is make sure there's no dry bits in the dough. We're gonna open this up and take a look. You can see that it looks really mixed. There's no dry bits of flour. I don't see anything on the side. You can kind of get in there and feel around. If you want, you can scrape down the sides a little bit. And that's it. So we're now gonna cover this and we're only gonna let this sit for about 20 minutes before we mix in the Levin. So our Autolys is done and it's time to mix our dough. Now I've reserved a little bit of water here to help us mix in the Levin and I've got my salt ready to go. I've got my pitcher here. So we're gonna start by adding our Levin and getting that mixed in. We're gonna add a little bit of our reserved water, but not all of it. And we're gonna continue to mix it. If you're not sure, make sure to check out my video on five tips for how to work with high hydration dough. And I'll leave a link for that in the description below. Our dough's been mixing for about five minutes and it's time to add the salt. You can see you have a nice gluten web. You can see the dough is starting to pull itself off the sides. So we're gonna take our salt and just sprinkle that over top. And then we're gonna use some of our reserved water to dissolve that into the dough. Now I'm not gonna use all of the water right now because I can always add some, but I can't take away. We're gonna start this. Our dough has been mixing now for about eight minutes and it's time to decide if we wanna add the last bit of our water or not. So I'm gonna open the mixer and I'm gonna take a look at the dough. Now it's still pretty tight. You can see it's got some elasticity to it and it's not as extensible as I want. So that means we can add the rest of our water. So we're gonna turn this on. I've now got the mixer running on high and I'm just gonna stream the extra water into the mixer. And I'm gonna go for it. We're gonna do all of it today. And often what I'll do is if I decide it needs more than that, I'll just use from my little pitcher here, but I'm gonna stop there. It's better to do less and scale up gradually in future bakes than to add everything and overhydrate your dough. So we're gonna wet our hands. We're gonna take a little sort of apricot or golf ball size piece and we're just gonna stretch this out. So what we're gonna look for is that it, it, if, it's, if it's tearing, we want that to just tear in the corners. It, that's a beautiful window. So we wanna make sure that we can stretch this out. It doesn't have to be perfect at this point. And now let's get this out of the mixer. We're gonna take our dough out of the mixer and I'm gonna lightly oil our container. So I just put a little bit of grapeseed oil in here. I wipe this out with a paper towel. And then I like to spray this. Now, because I'm at home, I don't keep a spray bottle with oil and water, but in the bakery, I would make a spray bottle <clears throat> and just spray it. The water creates that outer layer and the oil will slick the container so that our dough doesn't stick. Now, if the dough is really well developed and it's high hydration, shouldn't stick too much anyways, this is just an extra safety. So what we're gonna do to take this out, <clears throat> I'm gonna wet my hand, I'm gonna reach through the dough, pinch this chunk off like this, pinch this off, and then we'll pull it out. You can also just sort of pull, the, pull a chunk of dough out and cut it with a knife. Okay, so wet your hands, reach right into the dough, pinch this off on both sides. Then you're gonna just come in and pull up a large chunk of dough and you can do the same thing. I'm pinching through with my fingers. You don't want to tear that. And you see how it doesn't stick to my hands. Another option, if you have a knife, you can do the same thing with a knife. So grab your dough, pull it up, and just cut this off with a knife. Now, personally, I find it easier on the small mixer to do it by hand, but if I'm working on a very large mixer, I use the knife. Again, just take that out. You can see how nice this dough looks. It's like shiny. It's got a bit of gloss to it, and that's a really good sign that we've mixed this really well. Another sign is that the dough sticks to itself. So when I pull a chunk of dough out, it tends to pull out the rest of the dough and that's a really good sign of good development. Now the next thing we're gonna do just to bring this together is a really light fold. So I'm just gonna kinda throw the dough over itself and you can see the dough comes together, it picks up really clean and we're gonna sit that there. Of course we wanna take our temperature 
and we are 28 degrees Celsius, which is perfect temperature for this dough. So we're gonna put a lid on it and we're gonna bulk ferment this for three and a half to four hours, giving it two folds in that time. I like to write things down because I'm forgetful and I'll use a timer. So I'm just gonna make a note of what time the dough came off the mixer. I'm gonna make a note of the temperature and when I have to divide and when I have to fold. This is especially important when you're working with multiple doughs. So we're gonna do our first fold in 45 minutes to an hour and I will see you then. It's been about 50 minutes and it's time to give our high hydration dough its first fold. Now, you're gonna have to get in there Bulk fermentation is over, it's time to shape our dough. Now this dough hits the top of the, of the bin. So I'm gonna try and get this off without sort of tearing the dough. You can just kind of scrape it off. It is, I have maxed out the quantity for this bin. Now we are using rye flour. So this dough is going to be a little bit sticky and it's probably not going to come out quite as easy. So I am just going to grab a little bit of flour on my hand and I'm going to tilt this up. And with my hand, I'm gonna get in there and try and just get this out without sort of tearing the dough out of the bin. So you can see because of our rye, we don't have the strength that we have on other doughs if you've watched my 50-50 dough, but it still comes out relatively clean. It's not that sticky. I'm gonna get all the bits out of here. Now we're gonna start to cut this into 900 gram pieces. So I like to just sort of cut a big chunk or a strip off the dough. And that lets me sort of start my cuts. Now this dough has quite the volume to it. So you might find the pieces are a little bit bigger than you think. For example, that was a little bit overweight because they just look huge, all right. And then what I like to do is before I round them all off, I'm just going to set them on the table off to the side like this so that I can adjust the weights if I don't have enough dough. Yes, what's up my love? Okay, are you gonna videotape me making the bread? Oh, you wanna show me the pictures? Why don't you go in the middle, okay. Are you taking pictures of me making bread? Let me see. Oh, that's a good picture, okay. You're doing very good. So if you have a camera person around, they can take pictures of you while you shape your bread. It's very helpful. You know, you can post them up on Instagram, Facebook, maybe make a video for the TikTok. Thank you, Juniper. So as I sort of go, you can see my main dough mass gets a bit smaller and I'm just filling in the spaces on my table so that I can round these off after and just make sure that I don't waste any dough. Now, of course, if you're doing a very large production, you're just gonna wanna pre-shape them as you go or very likely you would have somebody else pre-shaping for you, but I'm just here by myself, uh, so I'm just gonna kinda put them to the side and then I'll go back over them after. I also find it easier to use the scale and get it out of the way than to sort of pick it up and put it down, pick it up, put it down. You'll notice this dough is real sticky compared to our other doughs that we've mixed. If you, again, if you watch my 50-50 dough, it is not like this, but this results in a really great tasting bread. Okay. So that one's a little small, so I can just chuck a few chunks off here because I haven't pre-shaped the other ones yet. Now we're gonna round these off and we're gonna place them on the side of our table. So I'm gonna just start here. And I'm gonna get these ones done first. So I like to sort of line them up. Now, I don't leave them touching uh, because I have a big table, but if they do touch, it's no problem. They'll pull right apart after anyways. So do not worry about that. If you're in a large, uh, if you're in a limited space, you might want them to touch because you know, you're in a limited space. 
I'm only making 12 loaves here, so they're easily going to fit on the table for me. So as I kind of like pull them towards me, I'm strengthening the dough on the table. I always try to create the same sort of matrix here so that I can count them easily. And I meant to put one here. And then that leaves me the space here for the final shape. So these are gonna sit. You can see, look at how bubbly these are, how beautiful this dough is. These are going to sit on my table for about 30 minutes before we give them our final shape. It's been 30 minutes and it's time to final shape our dough. So we're gonna take a little bit of flour. Now, I'm only gonna dust one of these because I'm doing a video. Uh, normally I would just dust the whole table. You can see they're touching, but that's okay. These should come apart very easily if you've developed the dough very well. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I floured the top of the loaf and I put the floured side down on the table. I'm gonna clear off the excess flour. We don't want that. Then I'm gonna put the loaf into sort of a rectangle. I'm gonna take the bottom, stretch it down, and seal. Then we're gonna take the sides and go out and seal. Then we're gonna take the middle and stretch it up. Look at how extensible this dough is. That's from all that extra water. And then we're just gonna work our way down the dough and seal as we go. So we're kind of stitching or crossing the arms or whatever you wanna call it. And we're gonna create a nice tension now then we're gonna just roll it over and sort of tuck the bottom in. So you can see we've got this nice loaf shape here. And I'm just gonna move this onto the side of the table. And we're gonna let this rest here while we shape the rest of our loaves. So we'll do one more. You're gonna flour the top of the loaf. You're gonna separate it from the rest. Pick it up in your hand. Floured side down on the table. Create that rectangle shape. Bring the bottom down, seal. Sides, out, and seal. Middle, up, and down, seal. Cross the arms, cross the arms, cross the arms, cross the arms. If it looks like it could use a little bit more tension, go for it. You can see that my dough stays nice and smooth. If you see like this, so I'll do it on purpose. If you go too far and you're gonna tear, that's a sign that your dough has not been relaxed enough, it doesn't have the strength, and you should stop messing with it. Up and over, and just give it that kind of tuck and roll here. Okay. And we're gonna place this off to the side. All right, I'm gonna get the rest of these shaped up, and we'll get them in the basket. Um, I think I've mentioned this in some other videos. I'm using rice flour. I normally like to use a combination of rice, rye, and coarse bran. So I'm gonna dust the baskets. Then we're gonna flour the tops of the loaves, okay? And we're gonna pick the dough up. So you're gonna pick the dough up in front of you, and you're gonna have two sort of halves. And you can see where the dough is wet. We're just gonna press that wet spot together like that. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a seal or a seam, and it's gonna give our loaf a great tension. So now you can see it looks dry there. It doesn't have the wetness. So again, I'll show you on this one. Scoop the dough up. You can see where the dough is dry from the air exposure and where it's sticky to my fingers. See how it's tacky? We wanna just close off the tackiness so that we don't have that. So there we go. And it's nice and wiggly. And this works really great for these high hydration doughs. So again, take a look. You should really be able to see where it's wet on the dough and just stick them together. So we're gonna get this bread bagged up. So I like to put it in a bag and don't let the bag touch the dough. I just reuse the same bag over and over. And we're gonna get these into the fridge. These are gonna go in the fridge for, what time is it? It's about 6 p.m. and I'll start baking them tomorrow around, around 8 a.m. So we're gonna be about 14 hours in the fridge. Uh, they're gonna develop a really nice flavor. They're gonna be a really good bread. I can just tell by the dough that this is going to be great tomorrow. So I will finish this up. I'm gonna get cleaned up and I'll see you in the morning to bake our breads. Time to score and bake our high hydration sourdough. Now I pull these out of the fridge about an hour before I go to bake them. And because I'm only doing two at a time right now, I sort of pull two out, 
and then I'll pull the next two out when these go in the oven. You can see that they've risen. When I press into them, they spring back. They also hold their shape and they're not flat over the sides of the basket. So if you notice that it's kind of like slinking off the side, that's probably a sign that you don't have a lot of dough strength and you're not gonna get the rise that you want in the oven. So I'm gonna take the lids off of these. Lids off. Now I'm using two different banatones here, but it doesn't really matter. They all do the same job. This one I find you get a bit shorter and wider loaf. We're gonna gently release our loaf. And now this one, because it's a bit longer, I'm gonna go on an angle, okay? And we're going to score the dough. So I'm gonna place the lamb on, open it on an angle, and score right through, okay? Now we're gonna place those lids back onto our doughs. I'm gonna add just a little bit of steam. You can use an ice cube. My personal preference is to spray. And we're gonna get these into the oven. The oven is now at 550 Fahrenheit, but when I put the bread in, I'm gonna drop it to 500. We're gonna go for about 20 minutes, remove the lid, and then we'll bake them for another 14 to 15 minutes until done. Most of our breads are done baking. They look great. Check it out. <clears throat> I've got a beautiful expression on the loaves. They look awesome. We've got some nice crusts on them. Um, I like to bake mine on the darker side, but sometimes when I'm giving them away, I go a bit lighter because not everyone loves that. It's much better to bake it dark and to have that nice expression and that, that flavor contrast. Let's cut one open and see what they look like on the inside. Whew, very nice, beautiful bread. So that concludes our high hydration sourdough. I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments if you're gonna make this and let me know what you wanna see me bake next. Of course, if you like this video, do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe. It helps me grow and it helps other people find me. Our goal this year is to make 50 YouTube videos. We're well on our way and I wanna say a huge thank you for all of your support and to everyone that's been watching and commenting. We cannot do this without you, so thank you, thank you. I will see you in the next video. Happy baking.